Every single day, I try to learn something new that I didn't know before. When it comes to GameMaker, I've got a few sources to help me do that. The help file, the GameMaker Discord, Twitter, and the YoYo Games forums. Here's some fun things I learned last week. On Twitter, I tweeted out one of my YouTube videos where we used origins and sequences. And I got a couple of great responses. Both were from members of YoYo Games. The first one, Mike, responded that here's a little shortcut key hint. Hold down Alt as you hover over the arrow of a keyframe to stretch it out. So let's see what he means. So before, when we had a keyframe here, and we didn't want to change that position in the entire keyframe, um, we would right click on it and click on stretch parameter key. And it would keep the position of that key across that entire keyframe until it got to a new position. What he's suggesting is that we can hold down Alt and move that keyframe extension out so that for the duration of this arrow, the keyframe will stay the same, which it absolutely does. That's fantastic news and what a great shortcut that is. There was another follow-up here that I said, that's great, is there a shortcut key for the transformation tool toggle? To which Antanas, from, also from Yo Games, responds, T for transform, R for rotation, E for scale, and Y for origin. We should probably add those to the drop-down menu. Then Mike follows up with, shortcuts keys are still being finalized, so that's probably why it didn't make it in there. But let's check it out. So let's select our track for the sprite. Let's push T, and our toggle does go to transform. R for rotation, E for scale, and Y for origin. So now we don't have to explicitly click the button in the, uh, in the toolbar here. We can actually just push T, R, E, and Y to change the transformation gizmos. That's great information. So I was on the help forums when I submitted a piece of feedback uh, about sequences when I wanted to see what other people were saying about sequences. So I typed in the word sequence and did a search and actually found an article that I found really interesting over here called Workflow Changes from 2.2x to 2.3x. And about halfway down, something had caught my eye where it talked about the sprite editor. So it says, under the hood, all sprites are actually now the new resource type sequences. What? Whilst this won't make too much difference in usage, it does mean that the abilities to manage them over the timeline have been increased and accordingly for the UI, uh, for the sprite editor has changed a little to show the timeline. Note that now you can stretch keyframes to extend them and you can even insert gaps between frames. So that's news to me, so let's take a look. So here's a sprite and it is different. You can actually preview and it looks like the, the sequence timeline down here just a little bit, right? So you can loop the sprite and view it in here. It shows the current frame. You can give it a speed, which is nothing new up here. But they mentioned that you can stretch the keyframe, right? So here, each one of these is only lasting for one frame. But if we have one of these frames that we want to last for just a little bit longer, here, let's say we want him to Ryu to drop to his feet and then wait here for just a moment. We could actually take this sprite and click on the arrow and drag it longer. Wow, look at that. So now this frame will actually last for four frames before the rest of it starts. Take a look at that. So I wanted to learn more about this. So I opened up the help file. Um, and it says that if I click on the right, mount, right mouse button when clicking on a sprite frame, I have the following options. And there's some new ones in here, so let's take a look. So we can copy to start, uh, copy the selected frame to the start of the animation, copy to finish, which copies the selected frame to the end of the animation, stretch asset key, which I think we were doing before. It stretches the selected frame to fill in any empty frames. And I think the shortcut for doing that is just to click on that arrow that we did just before and, and scale that up or down to fit multiple frames and delete asset key. This can be used to remove an image from a frame without actually removing the frame itself. So it just removes the contents of the frame. So apart from the option above, uh, above to stretch a frame, you could also position the mouse on the edge of a frame. And when the cursor changes from to a double arrow, simply click on the le uh, left mouse button and drag to resize the frame so that it takes more time. And that's what we did. A stretch frame will take more time to be shown, just as if you duplicated the same frame multiple times. Finally, you can click and drag the start and end points for the animation loop in the frame view so that you can see how selected parts of the animation behave with loop. This is done by left clicking on the red loop markers and then dragging them to the position you want. Oh, great. So when we click on loop, 
So you could have like an intro animation and then just those middle frames start to loop whenever it plays through. Uh, note that the loop points are purely a visual aid when working in the animation and will not have any influences on, on how the animation is shown in game. Okay, so this the, the loop point is just for the editor, um, but it looks like the stretch frames will uh, persist in game as well. And now that we know that under the hood, sprites are actually sequences, this might make a little bit more sense. Um, so we can broadcast the message from a sequence. So I'll read this out for clarity. So both sequences and sprites can generate what are called broadcast messages at any point along their length. These messages are simple strings that are added to specific frames along the animation timeline. And then when that point in the timeline is reached, the string will be broadcast out to all instances that listen for it. So not only can a sequence do this, but this is telling us that a sprite can too. But now it makes more sense knowing that Behind, you know, behind the scenes, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, so while this feature isn't added um, into uh, the beta yet, um, I'll be anxious to try this out and show you guys what it can do, both from a sprite and a sequence perspective and the things that we can do. Hey everyone, Sam from Mash Arcade here. If you like this video, why not check out another? And if you want to keep updated with all my latest videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.